Hi, this is David at MASH IT. Now we've recently reviewed the Dell XPS 9510 and I came away very impressed from that review. So much so that I've actually ordered the 17 inch version, the Dell XPS 9710. And I've actually ordered the top spec version to see how well the 17 inch larger chassis and the vapor chamber cooler copes with these high end components that Dell installs in these 17 inch creativity laptops. Now I wouldn't recommend this specification for your average user because this comes in at an eye-watering £3,199. As this model has the Intel 11th Gen i9 11,980HK, an NVIDIA RTX 3060 GPU, the 17-inch 4K Plus 16x10 touchscreen, a 1TB SSD and 16GB of RAM. But before we look at the performance, we're going to take a quick look around this actual XPS laptop, and just in case you're not familiar with this range. Now the first thing that strikes you about this laptop when you pull it out of the box is just how tiny this is for a 17 inch laptop. When I pulled it out of the actual retail box, I genuinely thought Dell had accidentally shipped me the 15 inch model. So I pulled it out, it is so tiny for a 17 inch laptop, especially when I'm used to 17 inch gaming machines, and it feels very light at 2.5 kilograms. Now you will feel that in your bag, but this is just the weight of a 15 inch laptop from a couple of years ago. So Dell done an incredible job making a slim, compact 7-inch laptop like this. Now the laptop build quality is incredible. It exudes quality and there's actually no creak or flex. And the machined aluminium chassis feels very robust. On the left side we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. And on the right side we have another two Thunderbolt 4 ports, a full-size SD card reader and a headset jack. And that's it. Now don't get me wrong, Thunderbolt 4 is an incredible port that allows you to do pretty much anything and gives you an incredible amount of bandwidth through this laptop. And that is great that you even get four of them, which is very unusual for a creativity or a gaming machine even. But I still prefer having some legacy ports on my laptop, such as an HDMI, a display port, and especially old school USB 3 ports, because I still have mice dongles and all different peripherals that I still want to plug in on a daily basis. Now Dell do provide you a little dongle with the laptop, and this is just a very tiny USB-C to HDMI 2 and USB 3. And that is very kind of them to do that because this is something that Apple would never do. And this folds up nice and compact and sits in your bag. So don't get me wrong, really pleased they've done that. And I'm really pleased you've got four Thunderbolt 4 ports. But on a laptop this size, I would have liked just a couple of legacy ports on there. Opening the screen with one hand, you can't help but be mesmerized by the beautiful Infinity 4K Plus panel as it fires up, even if the machine is actually powered off. Now if you want more battery and you don't need the high DPI panel or deal with a glossy screen, there is a 1200p matte panel also available. And the advantage of that is obviously it's matte so you get less glare and you get much better battery life with the 1200p panel. But the image quality is nowhere near as amazing or as saturated as this 500 nit infinity panel. Also this panel is touchscreen if that's your jam. Personally though, I don't want people fingering my panel. Above the screen we have the webcam and it looks and sounds like this. And this is what the webcam and the microphones look and sound like on the XPS 9710. And also with the webcam, we get Windows Hello facial recognition. And this works flawlessly and seamlessly and it logs you into Windows as soon as you open up your laptop screen. It's really seamless and it's my favorite way of logging into any laptop. And if you don't like Windows Hello, the power button also doubles as a fingerprint reader as well. So you will have that as a secondary option. Now the touchpad is a touchy subject, pun intended. Last year, Dell was plagued with touchpad issues of loose and rattling touchpad, and on a premium laptop of this price, it was truly unacceptable. Now, this is the new 2021 revision, and unfortunately, some of these issues do still exist. Now, I've had two laptops in, and both of my touchpads have been absolutely perfect, and no issues at all whatsoever. They are responsive, they work well, there's no rattle, and the gestures work very well for a Windows 10 laptop. But other viewers and YouTubes out there have had poor touchpads. So as usual with Dell, the QC is a little bit hit and miss. So if you get a good one, great. If not, return it and get another one if you particularly want this laptop. Another thing I love about this actual touchpad, if you get a good one, is the fact that it is absolutely massive and it does make scrolling around the actual uh, huge 4K plus panel nice and easy with a sort of touchpad this big. Fortunately though, it is a springboard, so you'll only be clicking on the lower half. If you start clicking at the top where it's hinged, it's really impossible to press down, so I often use tap to click anyway, so that's not an issue for me. The keyboard is a joy to use. It doesn't have a massive amount of travel, 
but it's got great pressure, great actuation points, and good spacing. We're also a good keyboard layout, so you'll have no problem getting up to a decent typing speed in no time on this machine. It also has adjustable white backlight for if you're in a sort of darker environment, and that's something I do love on laptops. It is useful, even if you can touch type, that very often you're going to be wanting to look at the multimedia keys, and it is nice to be able to see that in the dark. Either side of the keyboard, we have speakers, upward firing, which is great, and they sound like this. 50% volume. Now we're going to boost it up to 80%. Well, I've got to say, I'm quite impressed. I mean, this is probably some of the best sounding speakers on a Windows laptop I've heard. So there we are. Overall, a very solid package. Just like the last year's model, nothing's changed on this 9710, but it's difficult to improve on a winning formula. And I think, you know, Dell are quite right to keep the actual ergonomics and the actual size and shape of this laptop the same as last year. So now that we've actually looked at the sort of physical side of the laptop, let's look at the performance. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this model has the i9 11,980HK. This is quite an expensive upgrade, but I wanted to see how well this XPS 9710 would perform with its vapor chamber cooler, slightly larger chassis and fans in this model, especially over the XPS 15, which only has the standard heatsink. Now this vapor chamber cooler does an incredibly good job. Putting this through synthetic benchmarks, such as Cinebench R23 or Geekbench 5, is putting in incredible scores, and the CPU is allowed to boost at over 80 watts for a significant amount of time before it starts throttling back. Now this laptop does prioritize fan noise over temperature, so it will let the CPU hit 100 degrees before it even starts spinning up the fans. Now I know this is gonna be something that's gonna annoy some people because they don't like hit seeing 100 degrees centigrade, but these CPUs are rated at well over 100. So Dell have obviously decided that this is okay and they wanted a quieter machine. And bear in mind this is a thin and light laptop that people are probably gonna be using in an office environment or on their lap. I can kind of understand why they've done that, but I wish they gave you the option to change the fan speeds yourself. Now the i9 is definitely not worth the money in the upgrade because from my experience, it's putting in sort of a similar performance as the 11,800H that we had in RX-17, which proves to me that this chassis cannot cool the i9 processor. So save your money, get this basic 11,800H. That's a fantastic CPU anyway, that caps out about 4.2 gigahertz across all clocks, and you're not gonna get any more than that in this chassis. Now when the actual CPU is hitting over 80 watts, the fans will spin up. It's not particularly loud, but it does a great job of keeping the actual chassis cool, so you're not gonna get any burnt fingers whilst you're using this machine on load, which is a problem that we've had in previous years with some of the XPS machines. Now bear in mind, this model is the upgraded RTX 3060 as well. And although that only has a 70 watt TGP, it puts in some great performance in some of the gaming benchmarks. We ran our usual suite of Rise of the Tomb Raider, Warhammer Total War, Metro at 1080p, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And throughout all the benchmarks, it puts in incredibly good results with no throttling and frames per second, as you'd expect from a 70 watt 3060, right up there with some of the other gaming laptops that we've tested, such as the Asus G14. Now bear in mind this isn't a game machine, this is a slim and light content creation laptop. It's lovely to be able to actually game on the side when you get a few minutes. Now we are going to try a bit of gaming on this laptop because it has got an RTX 3060 in it. Now bear in mind this is a 60 hertz panel and although it looks beautiful and is great for content creation, it's not the fastest panel. So it'll be great for casual gaming, but obviously if you want a more fluid gaming experience, you're probably going to want to plug in a fast refresh rate monitor. Now we're playing Apex Legends at 1200p all high settings. Because this is a 3060 with a 70 watt TGP, we're getting some pretty good frames per second at about 130, and so far it's been a very smooth experience. Now you can see the vapor chamber is doing a good job here because we're running 65 watts approximately on the GPU and about 25 watts on the CPU, yet the temperatures are in the mid 60s for that GPU and about 70 odd for the CPU. So pretty impressive for the slimmer light laptop. Now I think Dell have made a good compromise keeping the actual TGP and the graphics card at about 70 watts because this is a very slim and light laptop even though it's got a vapor chamber cooler and by keeping it at 70 watts you're still getting good performance for the type of machine this is and it is the keeping the temperatures and the laptop pretty cool which is what you need 
when you're running a game like this without any throttling. Now something I've been really enjoying when gaming on this laptop is the actual sound of this machine itself. Now I've been using a lot of gaming laptops and some of the fans they really do crank up and they're quite a high pitched noise. This has got a, quite a nice whoosh sound as you're actually gaming on this laptop. So I'm just going to bring the decibel meter up and see how loud it is. So there we go, you can see on full load we're hitting up to about 52 decibels, which does sound quite loud and it does seem similar to other gaming laptops, but because of the sound it makes it is more of a whoosh than the loud fan noise, it's quite pleasant in actual use. So also whilst we're actually here, let's also check the temperatures on the keyboard deck. So this is the WASD keys, it's about 30 degrees as we move across the actual laptop. As we get to the middle, we get to about 41 degrees. As we move over to the right, you see it dropping back off, back down to about 28 degrees. And as I bring it back up to the top of the screen where it's exhausting the hot air, we can see they're getting a hot spot about 47 degrees. So overall, this is well in check for a laptop. So we've been playing for quite some time now. It's been a really lovely experience considering this is only a 60 hertz panel. It feels very smooth, we're getting good frames per second and there's no throttling. It's been playing absolutely flawlessly for the few matches I've played on Apex. So although this isn't a dedicated gaming laptop, this is still a lovely experience. So on to the conclusion. Now, if you watch my XPS 15 video, you'll realize that I loved that machine. And having reviewed this one, I think I actually prefer this XPS 9710 over the XPS 15. It's a 17 inch laptop that is incredibly compact and reminds me of like a 15 inch laptop. So you can cart this around with you all day. It's only 2.5 kilograms, which for a 17 inch laptop is not bad at all. And it's so similar like with this infinity bezel. Not only do you get four Thunderbolt 4 ports, which are incredibly versatile, you also get two upgradable RAM slots, so you can have up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and two Gen 4 PCIe SSD slots. So you can put in plenty of storage in this machine. Now the vapor chamber cooler does an incredibly good job actually cooling the 3060 and the 11th gen processor in here. But as I mentioned in the performance section, do not waste your money on this i9. It is completely and utterly wasted in this chassis. Now yes, if you've got a bulky gaming laptop like an Alienware and you get the i9, then you're gonna get the best out of it. But this machine, even with the vapor chamber cooler, is just too slim and light to cope with five gigahertz at over 100 watts. It can't do it. This can push out about 80 watts, so it will power the 11,800H really well, but just not that i9. Now, although this machine is incredibly powerful, it will cut through all of your content creation work, all of your development work, and this beautiful 4K plus touchscreen will show loads of that data on your machine. It's crystal clear, color accurate, very bright, an incredible screen. That leads me to the one big downside of this monitor, and that is the battery life. With this panel, you're getting just over six and a half hours of battery life on pretty light use. And when you're comparing that to say the new MacBook Pros, it really doesn't feel that great. Now obviously it is easy to just plug in a USB-C charger. In most offices, you'll probably find one. A lot of monitors, they'll have them built in nowadays, but it doesn't really take away from the fact that there are better options out there for battery life. But if you can get over the battery life, if that doesn't bother you, if you don't mind running from mains, I know I certainly don't, you get an incredibly powerful workstation and a slim and light chassis that can even game on the side. This could almost replace a sort of a mid-range gaming laptop. So I think this is a fantastic package. It is expensive, but this is probably one of the best premium Windows content creation laptops out there. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video. As usual, please leave your comments down below and I will get back to you. Please subscribe if you haven't already because we will be putting this up against the MacBook Pro 16 very soon. And lastly, thank you for watching.